So we want to welcome to the show Deb Shepard. She is a psychic medium. She is an author and she is also a teacher. This is her first time coming on Candidly Crystal and we want to make sure we give her the proper welcome. So Deb Shepard, welcome to Candidly Crystal. Hello. Hello. So who's going to be the bride of Frankenstein? Me. So I did the Bride of Frankenstein years ago, and I won a contest. I wore a wedding dress, my dad's boot, boots, and I super glued bolts to my neck. So if you do that, I'll be impressed. Oh, wow. no, you just gave me an idea because honestly, Deb, I was thinking, what shoes do I even wear with this? So now I'm going to wear boots, and now i got to mm -hmm. figure out a way to get the bolts here to make it look like the real deal. You just set the buy he bar here, and I was like right here. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah. super glue them on. They will come off, but yeah, I super glued them on. Will my skin wow. come off with them is nope. the question. Nope. <laughs> if it doesn't, then you don't know my number. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me on. I'm just so honored. And, of course, Crystal, I worked with you down in Arizona a year or so ago, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm grateful and honored to have you guys both have me on. So thank you. You know what, Deb? We are thrilled to have you here. As I was telling you, you know, in the green room before we started the broadcast, you were one of the first person people that I thought of when it came to our Halloween show, because when you came on my show, I was so impressed. My listeners were so impressed. And I thought this is perfect for the Candidly Crystal audience because everybody should get a glimpse of this because sometimes we have skeptics, right? We have skeptics who are like, Really? You should have a skeptic. Absolutely. I don't believe it. And then when they hear you doing these readings, they're like, oh, oh my God. Well, how can I call her? How do I get in touch with her? Mm -hmm. So let's jump in that, to that right away. You have been doing this for about 20 years, yes. over 50,000 sessions since you've realized your psychic abilities. Right. I want to know, first off, you said that it hit you like a freight train. Yes. What does that mean? What does that mean that your psychic abilities hit you like a freight train? It's all of a sudden I'm in the house and I hear my girlfriend's father, which I had never met before, talking to me. And I call her up and I said, hey, Susie, I think your father's around me. And she was an open-minded person. She owned a salon and she says, I'm really having a hard time. Well, her dad started apologizing to her about not helping her understand how to run a business because he ran a business and he trained taught his sons but never her and she was I really needed this right now and I just didn't know what this was about and, and he kept coming around I'd be in the bathtub and I could feel him around so I called her up and I said Susie he's in the bathroom with me he goes oh he loved women <laughs> So Does he know personal <laughs> space though personal <laughs> space <laughs> I know the boundary here um <laughs> So I just started reading books and realized, you know, this, I was a medium and it just started to keep coming on and I never was afraid. I never felt like this was a bad thing or anything. I just, it just felt like it was a fit. Wow. Did your <sighs> friend's father, like, did he follow you around for a long time? Did he ever stop? Is he still following <laughs> you around? Yeah. It was just like, a, I think he really impressed me to let me know not to just let this go. Like you mm. got to pay attention to this. And then she was a safe person place to land because she was, you know, definitely spiritual herself and, and open-minded. Um, and then other people would start, you know, showing up and I kind of stopped getting invited to parties because I'd be having a glass of wine and I'm like, Oh my God, your father's here. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to learn to turn it off. And these people, you know, that I'm sure they were all weirded out. So I had to learn to create those boundaries and not always be open to it. So I do turn it off, which is so important for sanity. Instead of I see dead people, you hear dead people. I do both. your thing. Oh, you do both. You see people as well. Yeah. What's that like? Is that scary? No, I, I, I always tell people I'm more afraid of the living than I am the deceased. I love that. Okay. I love that. Because, you know, I know that they're okay. They're just trying to send a message to their loved one. They're just saying hello. And, you know, I'll see them in the house. And we have a lot of activity in the house. They do a lot of things, especially electronics. But yeah, I'm never afraid. I just say, you know what? Go in the office. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> so I'm curious since, you know, obviously 20 years ago when you recognized that you had this ability and now have your private sessions evolved since then? Um, I don't know if they've evolved. I think maybe I'm more comfortable with it because it's like you've done something. It's 
I think my my job is to well is to help people understand their grief and finding tools to their grief. And I think as a messenger, there's one thing, but then people kind of get this feeling like, okay, now I have this experience. What do I do with it? Where do I go from here? And so I feel like the teaching part is also um, it's sort of the whole complete package. Wow, that. that's so great. And awesome. you have a new podcast called Spirited Straight Talk. Yeah. And tell us, tell us about that. That sounds so interesting. How can people listen to this? Uh, iTunes, of course, and is it Specify or Spotify? Dana's here to me now. I love it. I don't know any of that. I'm your sister. <laughs> That's um, Specified Spotify. Same thing. I know, whatever. So it's been on my Facebook. We just started this. We just launched it. And like you guys, it's sort of where we go in 2020. It's how do we connect with our communities and support our communities in a different way. And I have a lot more respect for people that do podcasts. So to you, to you ladies, you know, doing radio for those years, you just kind of walk in and you do your gig and, you know, you go home. Um, we have high ceilings everywhere in this house. So we've been in our master closet. <laughs> Until we build a sound room, we're in our master closet with all of our clothes and shoes doing this, this podcast. But it's been really enjoyable. We're getting great feedback. And it just feels good to give back to our community, which I think we really need during 2020. Oh, I totally agree. And and I also love that you're making it so easily accessible. You have a new online class called Sacred Contracts, and you're also offering an early bird special. So anybody who's watching, you can go online. This is a new online intuitive class, Sacred Contracts. Tell us about that, Deb. Absolutely. Uh, teaching is my passion and with COVID it really had to change. And there was a grieving moment like, okay, how do we restructure this so that we can still be part of our community and support them? Uh, Sacred Contracts is basically what we're trying to figure out what we're doing, what, what we're here for, what is our life purpose? What are we learning? And I believe that we're all here to become enlightened. And so the topics are about who your teachers are, uh, what you're trying to learn and the tools of them. So your soulmates sometimes are the people that give you the biggest problems. So all the challenges, and we look at the patterns to try to correct, not so much correct the patterns, but see the patterns so that we know how to respond to them versus in that drama or why is this happening to me and did I do anything wrong and I have all these regrets and sort of, and sort of understanding why we're here. Like my purpose is not to be a medium. My purpose is I get judged, I get um, abandoned, and my value but no matter what career I've had or who I've been with and the relationship, those things always come up. So I can either hide all of it and try to be a people pleaser or become transparent and not be offended by the judgment or the abandonment. Wow. Because you, you ladies know you're judged. All, whenever you're doing anything like this, you're going to be judged. You're going to hear comments, you know, what you look like, what you said, what you didn't say. And it's hard when you put your, um, your transparent self out there and it's learning like it doesn't matter what they say it matters how you're standing up in your power and I think a lot of us especially like you you women is we're showing other people that they can do this too yeah yeah it's yeah that's so mm -hmm. true and I love that that everybody that comes into your life is a teacher in some way that makes so much sense and you know you do some pro bono work with helping parents heal and the find me group right. including working on missing children and missing person cases can you tell us a little bit more about that you guys did some homework on you yay thank you <laughs> um yeah so we just passed it called being vetted so they tested me to see these cold setters is what they call them these sitters you read for them without knowing anything which i do all the time but you're tested with um how many points do i have to get for some six correct statements. 60 correct statements in 15 minutes i think it is so you're oh just goodness. and i'm not good at being tested but part of it is that you do want to get back to your community and you know you still need to make a living you're good at being tested <laughs> she was i being good at this is dana we're going to <laughs> <laughs> this is my job. I'm fine. Um, I hear voices. <laughs> um, part of it is that you want to give back to your community, but we also need to make a living. And so you just try to create that balance where, where can I give back and where I can help people out? And I just can't imagine um, a parent losing a child and whether it's a murder or they're missing or whatever, I just want to be part of that. It doesn't mean I'm the one solution. It means I'm a piece of the puzzle for these families that are trying to heal. 
I love that so much. If you are just tuning in to Candidly Crystal, we are welcoming psychic medium, author, and teacher Deb Shepard to the show. As you can see on the screen, if you'd like to book a private session, you can do that at debshepard.com. She's also got her book, Grieving to Believing, out. I don't want to make our viewers wait any longer, though. I think we should. Yes, there it is. I think we should bring in our first viewer. Let's welcome Miranda to Candidly Crystal. Hi, Miranda. There's Deb. Deb, Deb, there's Miranda. Me and Crystal are going to totally step back and we're going to let you two ladies chat. Okay, awesome. Miranda, you've got a good vibe. Yay, seriously? Are you the one that's always the peacemaker in the family? Um, kind of, more the leader. Yeah, but I feel like you try to get everyone, like, mm -hmm. let's get everyone on board, let's get everyone, you know, to get going so that there's no drama. So I really feel like um, you've taken a lot of stuff on. So good for you. So what's your question? That's exactly what I have to ask you about. <laughs> um, so, so kind of drilling down my, my biggest kind of question right now is, is, um, kind of surrounding my life's purpose. So I'm happy and I'm healthy. And, and honestly at 41 years old, this is the first time in my entire life that I have felt this good. Good. And everything just feels good. So in the middle of a global pandemic, I had this, I have this amazing opportunity uh, to start another business. And, and I think that's what I'm kind of uh, interested in just kind of picking your brain. Do you see, you know, do you see anything? Do you, I mean, do you feel anything like uh, just something kind of weird? I feel uh, always that I'm always waiting for the other foot to drop. If that makes sense. It's, it's too good. You know, you know, I think sometimes we feel guilty for being blessed. And when we see other people going through crises and challenges, we feel like we're supposed to go through that, too. And I will tell you, enjoy your blessings, because that's when you can pay forward. And I really feel that you're very dedicated to things. You're, you have this loyal heart. You say it like it is, like there's no BS going on. You're just like, here it is. What do you want to do with it? I feel like you kind of have the Midas touch, you know, that golden touch, you kind of touch things and you figure out how to make them. And even when they're in trouble, you, you're able to kind of spin it into a way that is a win-win. That's why I feel like you're that mediator, like let's make everything work. Um, the other thing is, is that when you go through some tough times, let's say you do, you've got all the tools. You know, it's not like you don't have the awareness of how to figure stuff out. And I don't play the, I don't feel like you play the victim ever. It's like, this is the problem. Let's get the solution. And so you're always going to kind of land on your feet. And this lifetime, you're not supposed to go through this crisis. You've had probably enough lifetimes with those. And this lifetime, it's about, let me create it. Let me create something so others can benefit from. And that's the blessing. Um, I also feel like you're a healer, not like a nurse, but I feel like you are also you're very intuitive. Mm -hmm. Oh, you smile. You smell stuff a mile away when it's not good. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like you really know. So your intuition is good. The fact that you have it, use it, utilize it, and you're only 41. If you can use it now and continue, what kind of business is this? I own, I own marketing firms. This will be my second one. Well, that's why you know how to make it work. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's way bigger. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think the thing is with, with things that's changing, like doing these podcasts, we're all reinventing our work. So I feel like you have that intuition and imagination to lead someone there and take someone there. And I think you build this trust. I keep seeing you build trust with your clients for them to know that if you're going to take a risk, they know they can trust you with that risk. Does that make sense? No, it does. I actually, I'm leading, I'm leading specifically with value. You know, I just, I feel like a lot of people lead with money and and if you can if you can lead with your client's best interests, you know, always forefront, there, there's no there's no looking back. That's the mediator leadership. Also, is your do you have a grandma that's passed? Yes. Was she really a strong woman? Yes. She's putting her arms around you, telling that she's very proud of you. And I don't know if you're a lot like her in the sense of strength and the sense of let's get the job done, but I feel like she never stepped backwards. She always went through the door and always took the risk. And I feel like she did not have an easy life. I feel like there was a lot of hardships that she went through, but I don't feel like she was a complainer. And she says, you got that from her. Does that make sense? 
And she says, you didn't get to say goodbye to her? She says, don't worry about it. I know we're, I know we're good. <laughs> was she pretty religious? She's a totally Mexican Catholic. Yeah. Okay. Because she's saying, I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she just feels like she really came from a, a tough place in life. But I also get that she was just this enduring, strong spirit and soul. And did she end up with diabetes? My grandpa did. Yeah. So the grandpa's here too. And did her grandma have a lot of, I see like 13 kids or 13 in the family. Yeah. So my, my, yeah, they had nine kids. She must've lost one then. She lost the one right before my dad. Okay. So she's letting you know that she's there with them and that you're doing a great job. Don't forget where you came from and not to feel guilty what you've created. Is that okay? I'm literally crying right I now because I can see the emotion in Miranda's face. And Deb, I, you know, I, you know my respect for you. You are you. always on the nose with everything. Thank and you. And you and Miranda have not talked. I just want to make sure anybody that's no. just tuning in, Miranda and Deb have not talked before this reading. This is happening mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, oh, no, my man. grandma passed away um, this year. And we couldn't go to the funeral because of COVID. Oh. And, uh, you know, my parents had me when they were 18 years old. So my grandparents had, on both sides have been just everything. Right. So I appreciate yeah. that. Thank yes. You. Well, and Miranda, we want to make sure we move on. Crystal, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm crying. Thank you. Ah. Thank you. Thank and if you. you want, if you want more time with Deb, you can definitely log on to debshepherd.com and, and talk with your grandma more and your grandpa and find out so much more. That is just amazing. Thank you, Miranda, for being here today. And we want to move on and welcome Maria to the, to the show. And Maria, this is Deb. Deb, this is Hi. Maria. Do you have any questions, Maria? I love your Halloween stuff in the background. Oh. Good, good. You, <laughs> you can't see the mess, the rest of the messy room. Oh. Um, so I actually um, was going to ask about my grandma too. Uh, I recently went through breast cancer. And, don't tell um, me more, Maria. Just don't tell me more. Just, you want to talk to your grandmother? Yeah. My grandma, Mary. Okay. Um, so just so you know, we always say don't feed the psychic, okay. let it come through, and then you can give me any information if you want. Mm -hmm. So um, your grandma says you're one tough girl, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're too young to have gone through breast cancer. I'm so sorry. But she says that you got it. So I'm assuming that it's gone. It's like totally gone. And she said that um, she would be, was she like a mom to you as well? Sort of. I don't remember. I, I passed away. Or, I mean, she passed away, sorry, when I was five. So I don't really remember. I don't have a lot of memories, but when Wait, we were was there. More of a mother, was she a mother kind of figure? Yeah. Okay. Because I really get motherly, like family and children and all this kind of stuff was so important to her. What is your question for your grandma? Oh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to know um, if she was there. Because sometimes I feel um, not as connected to that part of my family. And I feel like my life maybe mirrors hers a bit, but I feel like disconnected. So I just wanted to know if she was there. Yeah. And so I think part of this is the way to connect. And when we disconnect from our family and I know I've been there, it's hard to kind of relate because you feel like you're the, on the outside looking in. Yeah. And you don't, you feel like the person that's, you know, not part of this group. And what your grandma is saying is you're the best piece of it. That being part of this group is probably not the best thing for you. Does that make sense? And is some of your family kind of toxic? Yeah. Okay. So she just says, you know, you're better off not being part of this group. And I always feel like family of choice versus family of origin can be very powerful. Like I see the two crystals. I feel like you guys are family of choice. And when you have that, it's like this unconditional love. And she just says that you have been brave and your family doesn't really understand what you've been through or what they weren't there for you. And so you've got more grief than just that one layer. So what she's saying is find your family of choice. And she says, you're a rock star. Mm -hmm. So do you sing or do you, what, what's, cause I feel like you're very talented. Oh, no. Um, no, I mean, I, I was a host of a show, but. Um, like what, what did you do? Cause she says that you're the rock star. Uh, 
I didn't sing. I can't. I can't hold a tune for my life. Um, I I was on. A, I was a host of a show in in Colorado. Um, but that kind of you know everything kind of fell Change. apart this year. Okay. Well, she then she is talking about you being that host because I'm seeing you as a rock star. And like you, Maria, I can talk to dead people, but I cannot sing. I know the other, I know Crystal Stark can, but I can't. <laughs> so my, my, what I think she's saying is find, find the community that supports you the way you are. You're also very spiritual. And I feel like you, you have an old soul. Like you see things that other people don't see. And I feel like it, that's important to embrace it. And I have, a, I have a contract of abandonment. You do too. And sometimes it's a blessing, even though it hurts. Because we want people to love us, and when they're not there, has your father been difficult? Because Grandma said he has not really been a dad to you. Yeah, and, and so we're all going to get worse. Like, and my doctor said that, like, you know, sometimes um, this kind of thing will bring out the the worst in people, and it really did. And I felt so alone. Yeah. So. Well, you've got friends now, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, what happens? I mean, I, I write a lot about this because you're not only grieving for your life, you're grieving for people that are not there. So yeah. when you get all these layers of grief, it can be really hard to feel like you're healing yeah. and feel abandoned. You feel like, well, no one really loves me. And exactly. And that's why I'm like, oh, if, at least if like my dead grandma's there, then it's, you know, it's something to keep going for. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I know that she calls me a rock star and, and I'm not really doing that hosting gig anymore. Um, but does she see like something or does somebody see something like in the future, like where I should be going? You know what I sort of feel for you is to be really present. You have been distracted for a long time. Does that make sense? Yeah. And even though the rock star, even if you're not doing a show, in her mind, you're still a rock star. Mm -hmm. But I kind of feel that and, and it probably a longer reading would be more helpful, but I just kind of feel like you need to kind of sit in the moment and really sit with your heart of where you want to go. And I also get that it's important not to be that people pleaser. Like don't do something so everybody else cheers for you. Do something that really helps your soul. Okay. And I feel like you can be there to support others when you're feeling in a better place. But I just really get that you have a lot, a lot to give just balance it out with receiving. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I always believe having a lot of fun is the best medicine for healing. Okay. So find humor, find some fun things, take a class even so online that's fun, that isn't driven to an ending. Because I feel like you've been on this path of, I gotta complete this, I gotta complete this, I gotta complete this, and I'm like, you're not having any fun. No, you know how they say like you are on a life path and you kind of like, well, I don't, some people say like you pick it before you come here. Right. I feel like I have uh, I went off roading and I haven't been able to find the main road to get back. Home. <laughs> but you know what? Off roading I think gives us the best life experiences okay. that you don't get in college. Yeah. And the class that I'm teaching is definitely all about this. And I really get that you being present is the most important thing. So you don't you don't miss something that shows up because you're you're over here versus looking at what's ahead of you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and Maria, Maria oh, go ahead, Deb. Finish what you were saying. Go ahead. I was just saying, Maria, I really want you to love yourself because I don't feel like you love yourself. Yeah. <laughs> be right. be love. Yeah. Thank you very much, Maria. And sorry about the cancer. We're glad you're still here. Yeah. No, I'm getting Maria, did you feel open. like you got everything that you came here for? Because we want to make sure that you know, coming on Candidly Crystal, being able to talk to Deb live, that that you sort of got what, what you were hoping to get. I mean, yeah, like there's one thing that, I mean, I've listened to your podcast and you were talking about karma and I was just wondering if my ex-husband's going to get karma. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, really Aren't we karma, all? So. Yeah, well, I don't believe, I'm not a karma person. I don't believe this, sort of like a Christianity that you're going to go to hell, yeah. but I believe more in Dharma that we're here to learn. That was it. The Dharma. So Dharma is more about we're learning these lessons together to grow. And these soulmates that are so difficult are causing us pain to grow because we don't grow when everything's perfect. We grow when there's challenges. Okay. I love so that. Help I grow. love that. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So Maria, she's going to get hers the next lifetime. Okay. <laughs> My ex-husband is going to be a woman. <laughs> no, I meant your kid. 
Yeah, I like that even better. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> oh man, awesome. Well, Maria, thank you for thank coming you. on. You can always book another session, debshepherd.com. Thank you for you. thank you for obviously watching Candidly Crystal and thank you for being a part of the broadcast. Deb, oh my goodness. Again, wow. I'm, I'm sitting here. It was not my reading at all, but you no. had me in tears listening to this. If anybody's watching and they're saying, you know what? I, I kind of need some peace right now. How can somebody book a session with you right now? Maybe they don't have a computer. How can they do it to get in touch with you? Well, you know, my Facebook, I mean, excuse me, my website is my name, debshepherd.com with two P's. Please pay attention to that. But if you, even if you Google um, psychic mediums in Colorado, I come up first. So it's not hard to find me. Um, I want to ask Crystal Stark a question, though. Is this your first time watching a, a psychic and a medium? Yes. Like I'm live. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can see you yeah. going, okay, let me understand this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So I was just like, wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it was very moving. Just to thank you, my Facebook page, any kind of social media we're on, Dana will take care of you. Um, you can book online yourself or call us up and we will take care of you. And um, I really am honored to be here. This was a great group and you guys just have the a great vibe for this. So. Oh. Well, we want to make Thank sure we you. also remind everybody, too, about the early bird discount for her newest online class. Deb is offering a new online intuitive class called Sacred Contracts. If you're interested, you can call the number on your screen, 720-315-5235. Not right now. You can also go to debshepherd.com if you want to book a private session. I'm telling you, Deb and I have chatted, you know, even before we launched Candidly Crystal, and I found a lot of peace in it. So if you're looking for that, especially right now in 2020, do not hesitate to reach out. Deb, thank you so much you. for coming on the show yes, today. You, you were amazing and uh, we will be chatting soon. <laughs> okay. Yes. Good luck with your you. podcast, ladies, and uh, thank you. and uh, be safe for Halloween. I want to make sure we see pictures of your little bolts. So. I know. I know. Yes. I got to make that happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. You need to step up that game. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, you guys. Great. Uh, Thank you. Later. Thank Thanks you for again. coming on, Thank Deb. You, again, Deb. there is all her contact information. You can book a session and check out her new podcast, Spirited Straight Talk. Make sure you also go to debshepherd.com. We want to thank her for coming on our special Halloween show. Now.